ultimately the conclusion that I've reached is, and again to put this in the framework of Kansas law, in order to prove a case or charge a case against anyone uh, for use of force, I have to be able to prove that what they did violated the rules, excuse me, the laws of the state of Kansas. And when self-defense is the col colorable claim, that the, the claim that's being raised uh, by the person who used the force, I have to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they acted in such a fashion uh, that is not consistent with self-defense, meaning that they did not act beyond a reasonable doubt in self-defense. The conclusion in this case is that um, the police officer was placed in an unobjectively, uh, placed in a situation where he objectively and reasonably felt he needed to defend himself against the advance of someone who uh, was not responding to calls, both either from the officer or the family. Um, he did not respond to non-lethal use of force when the taser was used, um, and as a result of this, I find that there is no basis for criminal charges to be filed in this matter. Uh, final questions I suppose I would have would be with respect to the taser, why didn't it work? I will tell you that it was taken and tested by an independent lab, found to be in proper working order. I don't know if Mr. Randolph was in just such a state that it didn't stop him. Um, it's also possible that the, the probes hit too close together with one to the other for there to be a sufficient arc, for there to be a, a truly a, an impactful um, charge that could have affected him, um, but a non, well, the taser itself was in proper working order. Uh, also, I know people have asked about his military record. I will tell you that the military was uh, contacted and uh, not surprisingly, they let us, let us know they could not release his military record without a court order. Uh, some thought went into whether or not to try to seek that. Ultimately, whether he was or was not a or what his military record may have included was not truly ultimately relevant to this determination because it had to do with what the officer had saw that day um, and whether he had a honorable discharge, dishonorable discharge, anything like that would have truly been interesting and probably helpful to understanding maybe why this happened but wouldn't but again as I stated before I've got to confine myself to the scope of the, of the um, duties imposed upon district attorneys in this state and that is simply to determine whether or not criminal charges are justified. So what we have here is a situation where a family was in a, a desperate state with someone who needed help. They could not find it. Officers arrived. Officers did not know that he had a weapon. Um, and when it came out, it happened in a very short amount of space, very fast. Um, and it's a very regrettable situation. But uh, ultimately, the decision set forth by the facts was, was uh, fairly clear. And um, you know, I've set forth the, 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 uh, the basis for the case. Again, I'm, my role, role here today is to add transparency to this as much as possible. People want to know when someone does not, is not charged, why? And I think the citizens have the right to understand that and, and know what uh, goes into these analyses need to know what's happening in these situations and um, that's why I'm here so